if I have two equations and they're both lines, where they meet, this one meets right here, this point right here is the solution to both equations. Every single one that we've done so far have had one solution. So if I were to graph them, I would find one point of intersection. But what if I had an equation like y equals 2x plus 4 and 4y equals 8x plus 16. Notice all I did is I multiply this by 4, they're exactly the same equation. So that's why the lines are on top of each other, because they're the same equation. If I draw them, I'll have two lines on top of each other. It has all points in common. These are dependent and also, these have infinite solutions because every point where they meet is a solution. Every point is a solution because they're they meet everywhere. And inconsistent means that they never meet. These are two parallel lines. I they never touch, and I have no solution for, th for this. And how would I know? Let's say I have an equation like y equals, I'll just use 2x plus 4. And I have another equation, y equals 6x plus 15. I have two different equations. Since both of the slopes are the same, that means they're parallel right? As long as the slopes are the same, they're parallel. These just have two different y-intercepts if I were to graph it. So they never touch, they will have no solution. These are both called consistent. Consistent just means that there's a solution. That consistent just means they have a solution. That's why the last one's called inconsistent. How do we know if something's dependent? Well, we could do a lot of different things, but we could solve for by elimination. So I'll start here with 3x plus 4y equals 12. And remember, we want to get x first. So here I have 6x. I'm going to add the this 8y to both sides. So I get plus 8y equals 24. Just like I showed you, I can already tell that these are the same equation, but if I were to start solving it and I didn't notice, well, it doesn't matter which one I'm gonna eliminate, whether I'm gonna eliminate X or I'm gonna eliminate Y, I'm gonna multiply the top equation by minus two. So this becomes negative six X minus eight Y equals minus 24. And then I'm just gonna copy the bottom one, 6x plus 8y equals positive 24. And notice zero, this is zero, this is zero. So I have zero equals zero. Whenever I have zero equals zero, that means I have the same exact line. I have infinite number of solutions. Notice, Nothing's dependent on X or Y because zero always equals zero. So it doesn't matter what I plug in for X. And, well, I don't want to say that. Let me show you what, what, how, I would, how I would write this solution. So of course I have to know what X and Y are, right? Because I need an ordered pair, but there's infinitely many. So you could do one of two things. You could say either, let's say my first value is X and then I can solve Y in terms of X. Let's just start off with three X plus four Y equals 12. And I have, I'm gonna subtract three X from both sides. I'm gonna divide both sides by four. 
and I get y equals minus 3 fourths x plus 3. So if I wanted to write an ordered pair like this, I would write x comma, let me move this a little bit out of the way. I would write x comma minus 3 fourths x plus 3. Now, it doesn't really matter what I plug in for x. I will find the y that goes with it. x is 1, y is 2 and 1 fourth, which is 9 fourths. So there's a solution. I can plug in x equals 2. Actually, let me plug in x equals 4. That'll be the easiest one. So that makes this negative 3 plus 3, which is 0. So I just found my x-intercept. And I can continue on and get as many points as I like. I'm going to use y. And then I can solve. Instead of solving for y, I can solve for x in terms of y. And then I can put my other value in here. So for example, I, would, I need to solve for x this time. So I'll use, I can use this, this bottom one here. And then x, e, and I'll divide both sides by both pieces by x. I get x equals 4 minus divided by 2 is 4 thirds y. So I could write here that x is equal to minus 4 thirds y plus 4. And either way is fine because once I pick an X, I know X and Y. Once I pick a Y, I know X and Y for a dependent system. I don't think I did one that with parallel lines, but basically if you use elimination, what would happen is that you would have, you could get like one equals zero or 10 equals five or something that there's no way could be true. When you see something like that, it's not necessarily because you made a mistake, it's because there is no solution. Here I have zero equals zero, which is always true, which is why I have infinite solutions. If I ended up at the end with 10 equals five, well, that never is true, that would be no solution. That would be two parallel lines like we talked about. And we would just write no solution because there is no solution.